Well, the week begins with the Feast of St. Joseph. And we see from Second Samuel that King David has promised that his throne will last forever. And then in Matthew chapter 1, we see uh, that Joseph is of the line of David. Joseph is the betrothed of Mary, the mother of Jesus, making him the legal father of Jesus and giving Jesus access to this line to David. Next we hear in John 5 of Jesus' cure of the crippled man at the pool of Bethesda. And the Jewish leaders challenge him. Why would you cure on a Sabbath? Why would you tell this man to pick up your, his mat on a Sabbath? And Jesus responds that he is doing what the Father has told him to do, what the Father has shown him to do. The Jewish leaders hear this as blasphemy, that Jesus is claiming as a son equality with the Father, equality with God. In the way they would respond to this, they see this as claiming uh, such an equality with God that you would no longer need God. You would, you would have the power of God yourself. Jesus never falls into this trap. Jesus remains dependent on the Father, united with the Father. His goal is always the will of the Father. Jesus says, what do you think? Not everyone will follow him. There's a group of Jewish leaders who are particularly planning then to kill him. And this is the end of the week. We hear the readings from John 7. That this is their plan. Jesus knows of the plan and does not go up for the Feast of the Tabernacles with his disciples. But he goes up secretly because of the plan to kill him. But then suddenly he publicly is preaching in the temple once again. This throws the soldiers off. They don't know what to do. The people are saying, isn't this the one that they're trying to kill? How is he able to function like this? And the scripture tells us there are two attempts to arrest him during this time, but neither of them are successful. And in this we see a, a theme that recurs in John's Gospel, that all through the Paschal Mystery, Jesus is in charge. He's the one calling the shots. He's not a passive victim. So the Feast of Tabernacles is not the hour for him to come into his glory, so it will not be the time that he's arrested. It will not be the time that he's killed. John writes about this in a way to indicate almost like Jesus ascending the steps to uh, David's throne. Raised on the cross, the first step. Raised from the grave, the second step. Ascended into heaven, the third step. Sitting at the right hand of God, the fourth step. But as I read over these readings, another image came to me, and I think it relates back to my, my training as a physician. And I saw it as Jesus coming down from heaven, uh, as Jesus of Bethlehem and Nazareth, then being raised up on the cross, then going down again, being buried in the earth, the resurrection coming up, the ascension going further, and then once more coming down to earth with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Almost like stitches being made to repair the wound that's happened between earth and heaven. And that healing continues, and in his final coming, the healing will be complete.